Okay, welcome back to another practice session where we're going to do the same thing, graphing a demand and supply curve, and then uh, finding and calculating the consumer surplus, producer surplus, and uh, total revenue, total benefit, total surplus, and variable costs. And I've gone ahead and drawn, uh, graphed these two uh, curves, a demand curve, negative slope, supply curve with a positive slope. And I did that by uh, recognizing the y-intercept, 12, and that's when the quantity is 0, the price is 12. And then you can either recognize that the slope of minus 1 half is down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2, or my method is to see where the x-intercept is going to be for a demand curve. And the x-intercept is where price is 0, so you just set 0 for price equals 12 minus 0.5q, and you can solve that equation and get a quantity of 24 in this case. The supply curve, when quantity is 0, then the price is 2, that's our y-intercept, and you can either use the slope, plus 2, to go up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2, or, as I like to do, uh, plug in for a uh, certain quantity over here. Any quantity will work. I, I just happened to choose 5 when I did it. So I said if quantity is equal to 5, then the price would be equal to 2 plus 2 times 5, and that would give us a price of 12. And so I plugged in that quantity and got a price of 12. And when you have two points, you can draw a straight line if you have a ruler. If you're using a mouse like me, you get a, a wiggly line, but that's okay. So the first thing you want to do after you get your lines graphed is, is look at your graph and see where the equilibrium is. And this looks like an equilibrium price of 10 and an equilibrium quantity of 4. However, we always want to be able to double check in what comes later that skill is going to be necessary when things get complicated. And it's also just a good practice because in the real world, the equilibrium price will never be exactly $10 or 4 although I try to make these work out simply for these first cases. So uh, I have put the equations in Microsoft Word here. And once again, to solve these two equations is very simple. Since the price is equal to 12 minus 0.5q, and the price is also equal to 2 plus 2q, then at the equilibrium point, 2 plus 2q will be equal to 12 minus 0.5q. So we just need to solve and see what that equilibrium quantity is going to be. And so the first thing I would do here is uh, subtract 2 from both sides to get rid of that 2 right there. So we'd have 12 minus 0.5q minus 2, and then 2 plus 2q minus 2. And 12 minus 2 will give us 10 on the left-hand side, minus 0.5q equals 2q, and then I would add 0.5q to both sides, and then we're going to end up with 10 on the left-hand side equals 2.5q, 2.5 q's, so 2.5q. If we divide both sides by 2.5, then we can see that q is indeed equal to 4, like our graph was suggesting to us. Um, but let's also double check what the equilibrium price should be, that at a quantity of 4, that the price is 10, and then we can plug this quantity back into either the demand or the supply curve in this case, because the price is the same on both of them right here. And so plugging 4 into the easier, slightly easier looking one, p equals 2 plus, 2 times 4 will give us $10. And so we've double checked that that is the equilibrium. So first thing I like to start with is at that equilibrium price, what is the total revenue? And I like to draw in where the total revenue is. And the total revenue is a rectangle, which is base times height, price times quantity. It's good to visualize that total revenue because it's part of some other things we're going to 
calculate later. So total revenue is 4 times 10 or $40. So let me write that up here. Total revenue equals $40. Okay. Now, the next thing I usually do is calculate the consumer surplus. So remember, the consumer surplus is below the demand curve, but above the price the consumers are paying because it's the wedge that is the difference between what the products are valued by the customer as, which is the demand curve, and the price, which is what they pay. So it's kind of what's, what's left over between the consumer's value and what they have to pay, and that's that yellow triangle right there. And so that yellow triangle, uh, it shouldn't go above the demand curve there, but you understand it's just sloppiness. Uh, consumer surplus there is going to be a triangle one half times the base four times the height two and so the consumer surplus one half times four times two is four dollars okay then the next thing that I always like to calculate is add those two things together the consumer surplus plus the total revenue, 40 plus 4, 44, is the total area under the demand curve. So everything under the demand curve and over to a quantity of 4 is what we call total benefit. And the total benefit is the most that this customer this person would be willing to pay to get those four units. So the most they'd be willing to pay is 44. They actually have to pay $40, so that consumer surplus is $4 that they would have been willing to pay, but they didn't have to. Then uh, the next thing I usually calculate in these situations is the uh, producer's surplus, because in this case, I can see that that's a triangle. The producer surplus is the difference between the price the business receives and the marginal costs, which get added up to make the variable cost. And so we can pretty easily calculate that. Um, producer surplus, let me just outline so we can visualize that triangle right there. Okay, that is the producer surplus and triangle one half times base times height one half times well the base the top here is four same as the quantity and the height is from ten down to two so that's eight so we see that the producers surplus one half times four times eight sixteen okay and now the easy way to find variable costs, variable costs are, let's see, make them a uh, kind of bright orange here. Um, variable costs are, is the entire area below the supply curve. It's what we get when we add up all these marginal costs. We get the variable costs. And so if you look at the picture and you realize that the producer surplus and those um, variable costs are the two parts that make up the total revenue because the business person is going to get the forty dollars in total revenue pay their variable costs and then have producer surplus left over if the total revenue is forty and when they pay their variable costs, they have 16 left over. Then we're taking the total revenue and we're breaking it into two parts. One part is 16, and the other part is going to be what is left over. And so the variable cost must be 40 minus 16, which is $24 in variable costs. And the last thing I like to calculate is called the total surplus, which is simply what you get when you add the producer surplus and the consumer surplus together, which in this case is 16 for the producer, 4 for the consumer, 
So the total surplus is 20.